Today's section 1-6, rewriting formulas. Uh, formulas you've worked with in geometry, but you can see we're going to practice rewriting them as well as using linear equations to solve real-world problems. So with that, let's share a couple formulas we've seen. Uh, remember we had a definition one of our first sections of the chapter that said um, a formula is an equation or algebraic sentence that sets one e variable all by itself equal to everything else in the equation. So you'll notice in all of these that I have one variable that is truly by itself. And when we say by itself, in this case, we're looking at E equals MC squared. So the E is the var variable by itself. Up here, A equals one half base times height. So the area of the triangle is A all by itself. Another A equals pi r squared. Circle formula, the area of a circle. So each of those have a single variable set equal to everything else in the equation. Knowing that, let's um, move to what we're going to have to do. More than likely today, you're going to have some formulas that you probably do not have memorized. When we say do not have memorized, um, I want you to um, start working on them, especially those basic ones from geometry, perimeter, area, formulas of your basic shapes. Rectangles, triangles, circles, you really need a working knowledge of those and it doesn't mean off a note card. So when we start here, in our section, they're going to say solve for blank in terms of blank. They might say solve for y in terms of x. If they do, that would mean get y all by itself set equal to everything else in the equation. And they're saying everything else includes the variable x. Now, what if they said solve for c in terms of A and B. You could have more than one variable um, on the side that does not contain the single variable. You could have. So know that when it says solve for blank in terms of blank, the first variable is the one you want to get by itself set equal to everything else. So knowing that, here is our first situation. If we said, given our formula, d equals r times t, solve for r in terms of d and t, that means get r all by itself on one side of the equation. Now, in order to do that, we need to follow our algebra steps. So to get r by itself, we want to keep r here, get rid of the t, you should be saying, hey, I need to divide by t on both sides. If I do that, my result is d over t equals r. So you now have a formula for the rate r equals distance divided by time. r is by itself. Yes, you could write it in the other, other order, meaning you could have r on the left-hand side and the d divided by t on the right-hand side. That does not matter. Which side of the equation you move the single variable to does not make a difference, as long as it's that single variable all by itself. Next one. Here's an equation where you probably haven't um, used or even seen this formula before. And it reads v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. We want to solve for a. So you're thinking, okay, we got to get a by itself. In order to do that, we're going to have to move that v sub 0 out of the way. So if we do that, subtract v sub 0 from both sides, we would be fairly quickly looking at this equation. Then, still keeping our goal in mind, solve for a means a times t. To undo that times by t, we need to divide by t, and in doing so, 
we finally have the equation where a is by itself set equal to everything else in the equation. So a equals v minus v sub 0 divided by t. Because v and v sub 0 are the same variable, but they are not the same because of the subscript, you must keep them um, separated. You cannot combine. You can't go v minus v sub 0 and say that's 0. Um, they are two different things. The v sub 0 usually stands for the original amount, the starting point, uh, like in an ex experiment or a trial, whatever the case may be, that your formula has been used on. Okay, now let's try the part B. Solve for T. Same formula, we want to solve for T. If you look at what we did in part A, where we got down to V minus V sub 0 equals A T, and it says solve for T, this means we're almost where we were, but now don't get rid of the T, get rid of the A, because we want T by itself. So we're going to have very similar equations. The A's will eliminate, cancel, and you will end up with T equals V minus V sub 0 divided by A. So this just shows you that you're going to have formulas that you have not seen before. You might not even understand using them. Um, what all the letters mean, that's okay. It's the algebra steps that we want you to use to manipulate uh, those equations. All right, from here, if we had a right triangle as our scenario, in this one, we want to find the product of the legs A and B equals. So in a right triangle, the product of the legs A and B equals what quantity? So you got to think about your triangle rules and the different formulas you've had um, that use the legs of the triangle. So this is a real world problem trying to pull in some formula work. So if you look at that triangle, we know the legs A and B are values, and those are also known as the length and the width, the length and the height in a triangle. So I think we have the formula area equals one half base times height. Normal formula you should have memorized. So if we look at this formula and quickly change it, the area of the triangle would still be equal to one half, but our base in this triangle is little a, and our height in this triangle is little b. So if it says in our direction, in a right triangle, the product of the legs, a and b, that means when you multiply it together, what does it equal? So I believe right now we're looking at the product of a and b right there. So if we could just get rid of or eliminate that one, we would be complete. So how do you get rid of a times by one half? Some people say divide by one half. Some people say to undo a times by one half. You would just times by the reciprocal. I'm going to use that idea since we're working with fractions. So I'm going to times both sides by 2 over 1. In doing so, the 1 half and the 2 over 1 cancel. We have exactly what we need, a times b by itself. And we have 2 times a on the left-hand side. So the answer to the question, in a right triangle, the product of the legs, A and B, equals what quantity? You could say it equals two times the area of your triangle. So you will be given all situations, formulas you haven't seen, formulas you have seen, you have to manipulate them for this situation. And so it's just using your order of operations, your algebra concepts you've learned to manipulate those equations. Bring any questions you have or any formulas you're a little concerned about with you to class and we will discuss those along with um, any problems or any examples, issues you saw in your reading.